Greetings, bienvenue à tous et à toutes. My name is Wendell Nilaye Ajete. I am the son of refugees. I am a stranger in a strange land, a native land. I am Canadian. Like many in this country, I too immigrated here. My parents arrived first in the mid 1980s, escaping a repressive military dictatorship in Ghana. They came with little. I lied. They came with nothing except for the salt of their soul. Without formal education or technical skills or established networks, they knew that hard labor, much like in Ghana, would be their lot. They clutched their Canadian lifeline. So labor they did. From the sweat of their brow, my dad and mom cared for us and taught us to count our blessings. For Canada would allow my siblings and I to straighten our backs and breathe assuredly, since education, not nepotism, would catapult us from the working poor to the middle class. Like some immigrants, my family knows firsthand how difficult it can be to adjust to life in Canada. Homelessness and shelters, yes. Food banks and food programs, Yes. Donated toys and clothing at Christmas, of course. Whether institutional or informal, my family benefited from many kind gestures. The bumps and stumbles along life's road taught me the imports of exercising compassion, compassion, compassion. That one can do everything right and still fall short. Throughout my journey, fortunately, providence sustained me, while amazing grace saved me, so Canada could make me. My family's struggle to earn dignity in Canadian society fundamentally shaped my understanding of place, of belonging, and of citizenship. In fact, the raw beauty and strength of Canada regardless of what some might think, is that no single group holds a monopoly on the Canadian identity. To look Canadian, for instance, is to look human. Diverse hue, ethnicity, creed, culture, and language. My experience also taught me that one must never underestimate the will of a poor immigrant couple to make the most of their Canadian citizenship for themselves and their children. Through humility and much self-reflection, my parents and elders taught me what I call radical empathy. For it is radical empathy that compelled me, a poor immigrant, to reconcile daily the ongoing challenges facing so many of our indigenous peoples when I'm enjoying remarkable privilege. In fact, there can be no satisfying enfranchisement or inclusion of racialized Canadians and other minorities while indigenous peoples wait on the brink. It's not my intention to minimize anyone's subjectivity. However, before expressing grievances about how Canada has failed your community, I humbly ask you to reflect in this 150th year since Confederation, in this moment of truth and reconciliation on how you would feel if someone supplanted your birthright on your land and in your home. Exercising this Humility and introspection will make us a stronger nation and bring us closer to comprehensive truth and reconciliation. So, to all non-Indigenous Canadians, I encourage you to exercise radical empathy. Start by learning about the challenges facing our First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. To persons of African descent, particularly our beautiful children, our black girls and black boys, this society is yours too. Yes, our forebears suffered unbelievable discrimination and indignity here, 
However, our painful past and present need not define your future. The ongoing project and unfolding dream that is Canada is as much yours as it is anyone's. Seize it. Write a new chapter for posterity. You can do it. I believe in you. To my fellow immigrants, new and old, who found refuge on this native soil, I'm deeply honored to share this country with you. But I ask one thing of you. Please do not despise the color of my skin. In other words, be mindful of consciously or subconsciously believing or encouraging the negative and unfounded stereotypes about people who look like me. No other ethno-racial group, except for indigenous peoples, must surmount as many hurdles as Canadians of African descent. And lest we forget, black folk fought and defended Canada's liberty when they had none. That they kept fighting, championing the rights of the oppressed, often with the assistance of their equally pugnacious Jewish neighbors when both communities remained oppressed. And even when Canada deemed us unworthy, we were the first to demand that she open her borders to all racialized immigrants. So, my fellow Canadians, now that you have found refuge and greener pastures here, remember the sacrifices and selflessness of my elders and forebears in making Canadian society welcoming and inclusive. To my Indigenous brothers and sisters, your appreciation for Native life ways inspires and encourages me to honor my ancestors and to cleave to their teachings. Your collective resilience is simply awe-inspiring. We shall overcome. We must overcome for the sake of Canada. Peace and goodwill to you all. Peace and prosperity to you, Canada. Although imperfect, there's no nation on earth that can rival you. Paix et bonne volonté pour vous tous. Paix et prospérité au Canada. Tra, 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 omanye aba, yao. May God bless and keep our land. Thank you.